And what comes next is uh, actually a keynote presentation. Internet uh, uh, we invited Desiree Milosevic. She is an internet communicator. I think that this is how we may title her. And she will talk about the multi stakeholder model of internet governance. And she will describe the projects that are being carried out on the international scale at the level of the IGF and the World Summit on the Information Society. Thank you. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. At TLDCon, I'll be uh, presenting uh, today um, very important questions about the critical state of internet governance. And um, I feel for everyone in the audience uh, because uh, there is so much to follow and there is so much to take note of. Um, there are so many venues and processes uh, taking place in parallel um, to try and uh, make a head of a tail where the internet governance is going. Um, so the objective of this um, uh, talk today is a little bit to also uh, explore also the question, um, what is the current state of the discussions when it comes to uh, preserving and evolving the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance? And um, because we are at a point where the social impact of the internet is um, not something that was uh, anticipated before, and um, it's hard to deal with all the challenges uh, that are coming our way. Uh, but nevertheless, um, the technical community and um, other stakeholders are um, uh, dealing um, with these challenges, trying to keep the technological um, technology and uh, governance system that we have built and that has proven and that has brought us uh, the internet so far. So we look at some factors influencing um, internet governance in, in my view, and then we will um, look more deeply in the current discussions around the United Nations processes, the Global Digital Compact, the World Summit on Information, uh, on the Information Society, plus 20 review and the Internet Governance Forum or the IGF. Um, finally, we'll have some time for discussion. We'll look at the um, uh, technical community responses and participation in these processes and um, discuss together and form a dialogue how we can um, create more opportunities. Where are the opportunities now? Uh, to evolve and continue to strengthen the um, internet governance model and the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance. Um, I'm not sure how many uh, people are familiar uh, with the history of the internet governance. Um, uh, the term was coined back in the 90s, but certainly the internet governance um, definition, one that has been more accepted, is the one developed by the working group on internet governance back during the World Summit on the Information Society in 2005. And they have come up with this um, um, definition where it says that internet governance is the development and application by the governments, by the private sector, by civil society. And later on, we see in the technical um, uh, technical community also recognized in the Tunis agenda. Um, with regards to the shared norms and principles and decision-making processes, and programs that shape the use, uh, the, the evolution and the use of the internet. 
Um, but anyhow, that is um, a, a very long worded um, definition, uh, but you get the key concept. And maybe just uh, for our orientation, um, for the newcomers to say that uh, we uh, tend to think of internet governance stakeholders that they comprise of uh, um, governments or member states, the private sector, the academia, the um, academic community, the civil society and technical experts, but also international organizations. And um, what are some of these key aspects um, that the technical community is, is, is managing and maintaining is are these internet resources such as uh, uh, names and numbers, and within this um, governance system that has been built and proven to work well, um, there has been a, um, a policy development uh, taking place uh, as well. And as we know, there are uh, regulation as well and frameworks um, that are governing some aspects of what we think of internet governance, such as uh, security or privacy, you know, the censorship, the access to information, content and everything that comes with content, um, emerging technologies um, such as um, artificial intelligence and, and quantum computing, for example. Um, and also um, to say um, a couple of words about um, since we are at TLDCon, uh, we have many CCTLDs um, in the audience following this. Uh, this was a map uh, formed, uh, I think, designed by the Internet Society at the time, uh, trying to um, portray this uh, picture of organizations um, that are dealing uh, with providing uh, services such as naming and addressing. There are standards bodies that do open standards development, such as the uh, W3C consortium. Um, there is the um, Internet Engineering Task Force, Internet Architecture Board, the Internet Research Task Force. And there are other specialized standards bodies like Etsy or the the ITUT part of the international telecommunications. And then you can see that we also have legislations um, at the local, national, regional, but also at the global level, um, where you can see uh, many um, members or stakeholders we mentioned earlier. Um, and, and you see again in shared services and operations, we again have GTLD, CCTLDs, the Internet Exchange Point, the root service operators, and so on to continue to keep this um, and maintain the core of the Internet so that we can have interoperability um, on a global scale. Um, so here I would like to maybe single out uh, some of the factors that are influencing the um, governance of the internet. When you think um, what is really happening in the world, um, we see uh, geopolitics. Uh, we currently will go further down uh, into a look at some major trends and the UN processes such as the global Digital Compact or the GDC, which is a part and preparation for the Summit of the Future, uh, taking place um, later on this month in New York during the UN Assembly, where the member states will adopt um, this document that relates to some of the, um, I'll tell more about that, um, digital aspects of uh, digital policy and internet governance as well. Uh, we look at the World Summit on Information Society Plus 20 review um, and, uh, and the IGF. And the third, perhaps, uh, factor that is taking all the air from our discussions is the artificial intelligence. Uh, so 
it might be good to remind ourselves uh, what the geopolitics and tensions and considerations in internet governance are. You know, there are many examples um, when the geopolitics, which um, in other words, is the study of influence of geography and how to extend your borders and economics in international relations, how to extend the frontiers and do the um, other even space exploration. Um, we are all feeling the consequences of, of these geopolitical activities, uh, whether it's the extension of BRICS countries, whether it's the sanctions or some kind of a regulation that is um, not regional but global and has to align with these competing and different regulations that exist in different um, sovereign states. So um, with that, I think we are nevertheless in living in precedented times because we have got this construct of cyberspace, um, which in terms of scale and scope is really unprecedented. Um, so it is not new that different member states have different and different nations have different ways of uh, internet regulations and how to um, um, have diverse approaches to internet governance. Some of them are more top down, some of them are bottom up. Uh, but this multi-stakeholder model, uh, where which is the most efficient model in making policy where you have the buy-in of all the people discussing the policy uh, um, approaches and the policy details is something that um, we are looking to strengthen, evolve, and um, and and uh, keep. Um, so uh, it is, I think, we are familiar that all the geopolitical considerations will impact uh, things like security or privacy or, or censorship. And it is essentially how countries prioritize sovereignty and security and influence their stance in internet governance. Um, so with that, I think what we then could conclude is that internet governance is a process whereby stakeholders will resolve conflicts over internet governance problems, and they will ideally develop a workable order and that include policy development process and policies. But the meta question is still above uh, and hard to uh, pinpoint is um, who's in charge in internet governance and who decides who decides. I'm not sure how you say that in Russian, who decides who decides. Um, I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, the third factor that I mentioned that is influencing internet governance um, uh, dialogue and discussions is definitely the artificial intelligence. And I have included here a, a picture of the something that the artificial intelligence DALI sees internet governance. So this is what you get when you ask him to create a picture of internet governance. This is the, the photo. But uh, it is there for a reason, because it has, as you know, a great role in shaping the public opinion in addition to social media platforms. And um, especially the something that the member states are so worried about, but also society as well, uh, so-called uh, deep fakes and the, the disinformation campaigns uh, that become viral, uh, where you can no longer um, have trustworthy uh, assess of the information you, you assess online. Um, so now that we looked at these three factors, let's let's look more into the current state of the discussions and uh, what the global uh, digital compact is all about. Uh, we will also look at the summit of the future I mentioned uh, taking place in two weeks time in New York and uh, you can register um, for that uh, through the WISIS action uh, days. Um, the CST consultations that will take place, uh, there's the Commission on Science and Technology um, uh, consultation on the World Summit Information Society taking place in October in Geneva. Um, 
they had an open consultation also previously in uh, March this year, um, where technical community and maybe some of you uh, sent in their um, replies as to how do you see the WISIS, uh, what has WISIS achieved so far. And then at the end of the year, we have the global IGF in Riyadh um, and the um, registration for that event is, is also open. Um, and then the following year, there will be this review of the World Summit of Information Society uh, because its mandate has been reviewed 10 years ago um, together with the IGF and uh, there will be a follow on UNGA 2026, depending um, um, who confirms whether they would confirm the mandate of the extension of the WISIS as well. And uh, also important is the planning potentiary in 2026. So having lined up these um, events um, that we can discuss uh, further uh, later on, I, I think it would be useful to uh, perhaps uh, dwell a little bit uh, deeper in the UN Digital Compact, as that was uh, the ask. I wish I could see the audience, but I don't know how many of you have heard of the UN Digital Compact. Maybe you can type it in the in the chat. Um, this has been uh, a, a process uh, that has started in the report of the U United Nations Secretary General um, Antonio Guterres report. He has this uh, global um, agenda, and um, the agenda is to really um, try and save the world as his, we are witnessing the climate change, we're witnessing uh, many other things in the world um, that uh, we are lacking cooperation. So it is a very ambitious uh, attempt uh, by the United Nations to develop this uh, global framework and um, that will be, uh, and, and the digital compact is just the digital part of it uh, to meet the sustainable digital goals, uh, the 17 of those, uh, in order to respond to all the current and, and future challenges. Um, but the your United Nations Global Digital Compact process started back in 2003, and uh, it is ultimately a multilateral process, apart from some interventions where they have allowed uh, stakeholders, including the technical community, to send in their um, uh, responses uh, to the draft, to the zero draft of the UN GDC. Um, and other stakeholders like the civil society. However, um, there is no transcript or transparency uh, as to how these inputs were taken into the final draft. And the um, and this document that is development orientated, that has some uh, really good goals, um, is still being discussed. Um, it was aimed to being adopted already. I think the secretariat and the co-facilitators are hoping that member states uh, would have agreed um, to the text prior to New York, but it may actually, uh, we'll see what happens because now we are at a, a draft number four. So um, there were three revisions of zero draft, uh, revision one, revision two, revision three, to which only member states could um, comment on. And it has been, the process looked like um, that anyone from the member states could comment on changes in the text of the draft. And if no silence was broken, the draft would be adopted. Um, however, we have seen there was a broken silence on revision two and three, and uh, it is uh, it is not known what will happen with revision four, whether the, the final text will be accepted prior to the September 21 and 23 in New York during the summit of the future. Um, we have obtained a copy 
of the part of the GDC, which is a much longer document with 76 paragraphs uh, addressing other issues such as international human rights and um, artificial intelligence, um, the setup of the new um, uh, staff support for the tech envoy in New York. Um, but the the paragraphs that we're interested in are mainly concerning the internet governance and whether the GDC would uh, really give full support to the IGF um, and recognize it as the multi-stakeholder platform for uh, internet governance discussions. The text has gone many iterations uh, through different revisions, and it's also, you know, ambiguous, as you know, to 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 work out in some of these sentences whether built on something, built on IGF means that you built on a new thing or a new, uh, or whether you build on by strengthening it. So there are still some ambiguity in these texts. Um, um, however, uh, it is uh, good that that uh, the current draft says that the internet governance must continue to be global and multi-stakeholder in nature um, with full involvement of governments, the private sector, civil society, international organizations, technical and academic communities, and all other relevant stakeholders. So we we do hope that this would end up in the final um, GDC version. I have uh, put a link for you uh, there that you can see previous versions which have been published on the site. And uh, now I would like to uh, cover the World Summit information on the Information Society uh, Plus 20 review and why that is an important subject as well. Um, as I might have mentioned, the WIS Students Agenda, which is a document from the, the Phase 2, not the Geneva Plan of Action, which was the outcome of 2003 Phase 1 WISIS, has established the Internet Governance Forum as the primary multi-stakeholder platform for discussion on Internet governance issues. So with the renewal of WISIS Plus 20, it is... Uh, I, 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 Internet Governance Forum having been established by the WISIS, there is an understanding right now in the dialogue that Internet Governance Forum will also be renewed. Um, but um, we we cannot um, you know look into the future because uh, the WISIS Plus Twenty review has not has happened yet, and uh, there is a, a set of um, of preparatory meetings that are being planned. Um, so there is another issue where the GDC, if it gets adopted, where the implementation of all these commitments and pledges that the member states will sign up to would be followed. Who will be the watcher of, of the commitments and pledges made in the GDC and whether that discussion would take place at the next iteration of the IGF, once the WISIS Plan 20 has been uh, renewed or the WISIS mandate uh, be renewed um, next year. Of course, um, there, there was a high level forum that took place in May this year, and um, the set of preparatory meetings um, are really important for the technical community, but also other stakeholders. It's an excellent opportunity to get involved, um, to build coalitions, um, to, um, uh, to uh, make the um, input that is necessary uh, into all these documents and meetings. So, as I said, the IGF renewal is part of the WISIS Plus 20 review. There is also um, a, an event in February next year uh, that uh, will take place at uh, UNESCO and more uh, CSTD meetings, which are part of the UNCTAD. Um, but one uh, worthy, um, um, uh, worthy comment is also the... Uh, Net Mundial event uh, that took place earlier this year in April. 
And that event has shown that the multi-stakeholder community can convene and coalesce around important issues of how the multi-stakeholder model should evolve and be strengthened. And it has managed to do that, you know, outside of the UN agencies and outside of the um, full, I would say, um, you know, international organization support. Um, and it's a really important uh, document because it has uh, not just confirmed the principles that were adopted back in 2014 about uh, what is the internet governance, but it has come up with multi-stakeholder guidelines that multilateral processes um, can follow as well. Um, I've um, participated at the WISIS High Level Forum, which was really dedicated to the action lines. And I think this is where the focus is. And, uh, and we need to continue what is what are the achievements and the input of, of um, the output of the WISIS and, and how um, these action lines are followed uh, by various uh, stakeholders. Um, the Internet governance discussions continue in these meetings, like our technical community meetings, at ICANN meetings, at RIPE meetings. The RIPE Cooperation Working Group has meetings two times a year, but we also have some meetings that are um, uh, outside of those meetings. Uh, so we have intersessional meetings. And also one useful source of information is the ICANN WISIS Plus 20 outreach network they have set up a mailing list so for people who would like to follow the discussion um, they are welcome to go to and follow these links and subscribe because a lot of comments are shared about uh, where we are in the internet governance uh, discussions right now as well as ideas um I think this is all to, um, to say that internet governance is really critical when it, when it comes to the um, global communication, access to information, the shaping of uh, the internet governance and how the internet is run, that it cannot be understated. And many stakeholders have um, got uh, a lot of uh, concerns like the civil society, about a foundational shift that might happen um, over the course of this and the following year in terms of the approach to internet governance, um, whether it's um, uh, less participatory, less inclusive, only member state orientated, because at the moment when the GDC is being discussed in New York, um, there's no access to technical community to provide their advice or the um, a high level leadership panel of the IGF is also um, seeking a way how to intervene and provide, uh, you know, the necessary evidence and operational expertise that the internet community brings to the table when we discuss um, uh, digital policies and when we discuss internet governance matters. Uh, so I would like to say then note um, that the multi-stakeholder participation in this community decision-making processes that are open to anyone is something that a RIPE community has been practicing since 1992 and um, they take part in reviewing documents of various working groups of the RIPE. I'm not sure how many you're familiar with all the working groups of the RIPE community. Um, and, and this is how the policy is made um, together. And uh, it's open and anyone can make a comment uh, because it is the efficient decision knowing what the other stakeholder has in mind. So the RIPE NCC has also participated in the in these processes I mentioned earlier in the CSTD consultation, in the IGF, the internet we want, in they provided input into GDC zero draft and other questionnaires. And you can find some of their inputs on the links I have put here as well. Um, so 
the strengthening and the evolution of the multi-stakeholder governance and approach is 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 something that uh, we have been discussing in many fora, Internet Governance Cook fora, and we will continue to discuss. Um, there isn't a silver bullet that we can do just one thing that we can then rest and say, okay, we have done it. I think it's a continuous effort and it's in continuous engagement. And we are thankful to all the volunteers, to all the members of the technical community that are uh, keen uh, to work on the evolution of the internet governance to preserve the success, to preserve the global interoperability and uh, the um, uh, important access uh, to the information. Um, so we will discuss maybe some strategies as well for strengthening um, this evolution, but um, it is uh, almost um, obvious uh, to note that, uh, you know, investing in education and, and tra training um, people to to be empowered to participate in these discussions, policy discussion and digital policies is something that is necessary. And um, there are many, as you know, schools on internet governance, there are many um, venues and like TLD Conda discusses these issues. There's ICANN CCNSO. There are um, places where um, people need to learn about the history and, and, and start getting involved. Um, so also what it, it, it can be done or, or must be done is this to encourage this um, cross-border and cross-sector cooperation to, uh, to, to address these global challenges. As I've remarked earlier, the current model was not built to deal with all the um, consequences of the social impact that the technology has brought onto society. And it's not all positive, as we know. Um, but um, we may not be shy to think and suggest of some institutional reforms, how to keep the multi-stakeholder model ingrained at our regional level, at our national level, at a global level, and to explore the, the ways and how we can refine the governance structure. So many ideas uh, out there um, that we hope to use, and uh, we hope that everyone will get involved in contributing with, with their two cents, um, as, as one would say. Um, so that includes individual users, that includes businesses, that includes um, governments, but also uh, civil society groups. Uh, so um, that is an on, on, ongoing um, thing. And so to, to recap some of these, um, you know, um, key points um, that uh, we've discussed here, um, there is definitely... Uh, I must emphasize the importance of this collaborative, inclusive approach to internet governance. And uh, me coming here today is also a sign of collaboration. So I want to thank you for the invitation. Um, we must be aware of these parallel technical community approaches for fostering the, the multi-stakeholder participation, but also working with the with, uh, stakeholders on their own turf. We're happy to go and talk to governments. We're happy uh, to talk to academia and civil society. And uh, we invite them to come. And our doors are open. Our tent is open. We're very inclusive. We're consensus-based, as I say, like uh, the RIPE and ICANN community. So um, what we are nevertheless uh, witnessing uh, with all these concerns uh, about the trends that are um, showing some um, inklings as to where the internet governance might end up over the next two years, there is this critical need for dialogue and cooperation. And uh, the issues aren't simple, uh, but also um, you have um, friends in the community um, who will be there for you should you need any more questions. So. Um, 
and there is a call to action for everyone to engage in shaping the future of the government so that it will remain inclusive, trustworthy and accessible. Uh, with that, I'm very happy to um, have any questions um, you might have. Uh, join the IGF, at least remotely. Uh, Desire slides will be uploaded to the materials of this conference. Because uh, on the slides you see, uh, well, you saw, uh, she had many uh, links um, that might be of interest to you. In particular, the materials of uh, the Net Mundial and the draft versions of the GDC. I hope to see you in Riyadh.